good God. And if you know that he is, let us worship him today. The choir is going to come now and lead us in the ministry of music. Trust him 
serve a God like that Amen. with all the failures happening in our world today we know that Jesus would never fail I think all of us have tried him for ourselves and each time we do Jesus comes in right on time amen amen, amen. my brothers and sisters as we come down to the throne of grace we want to first of all thank God for giving us a place where we can come and pray uh, to him uh, we can pray anywhere, but when we come here at our church, West Hyattsville, we come knowing we can bring to God our burdens. And when we bring them, what we ought to do? Leave them there. Bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. And each time we do, Jesus is able to pick up our burdens and deal with it for our good. Amen? Amen. As we come together in prayer on this day, let us remember... Uh, our former pastor, the Reverend Emmett Dunn, who is not well on today. He was scheduled to preach this morning, uh, but on my way to church, he called and uh, let me know that he is not uh, doing well, has a very bad cold. And so let us lift up our friend, our brother, uh, the Reverend Emmett Dunn, that God would give him the healing uh, that he needs. Because, of course, after the day, you know, the whole week of work comes back. And uh, he has so much on his plate to do as executive director of the uh, Lakeri Convention. So we want to pray that God will, will heal him and give him the strength to carry out the work of the kingdom. Let us remember Sister Danielle Anderson, uh, who has not been well the past few days. She was taken to the hospital, haven't heard if she has been released yet, but we want to lift her up that God would be with her uh, in her time of need. Uh, we praise God for the successful surgery of our dear friend and brother, Reverend Wright's mother. Pray that all went well. She is recovering at home. And let's continue to pray that God would be with her. We thank God for Sister Jean, who also had uh, a successful procedure on this past week. And pray that God will bless her. Praise God for Sister Anne uh, Darius, who also had a successful procedure uh, this week. Uh, went into the hospital, went back home and called me and said, Pastor, I'm feeling fine. And so we give God the praise for how he is healing people and how he is able to help us. Continue to pray uh, for Brother Herbert Jenkins, who is still in the nursing home, and pray that God would be with him also in his time of, of illness. Uh, we want to pray for Sister Angel Berthe, who is the uh, daughter of Sister Stacy and Brother Herman. Birthday, pray that God would be with her and give her strength and pray for Sister Stacy's mother, Sister Cox, Amen. who is also uh, not doing well. Amen. My brothers and sisters, on last evening we received word of a tragedy in Buffalo, New York, yeah. where 10 uh, individuals uh, were murdered by one, indi one individual, one young 18-year-old uh, man. Uh, so far, they have indicated that this attack was uh, racially motivated uh, because um, all those who were murdered uh, were black people. And uh, we, we want to first of all pray for their families uh, because this morning uh, there are 10 empty seats uh, around Buffalo. There are uh, 10 empty rooms around Buffalo. There are 10 friends, family members who have been taken away, who went to the grocery store just to get some groceries. Uh, and someone walked into the store and killed 10 and injured more. We pray for peace in the city of, of Buffalo, and then we pray for peace in our country and pray that God will be with us as we go through these difficult moments. 
There is trouble everywhere. Uh, but we pray that God will still bring peace in the midst of our storms. And you know, God is so merciful, so gracious and kind because the individual who stopped the killing, his life was also taken. A retired police officer. If he, if he had not been there, it could have been worse. So we pray again for all these families who now have to go through a period of grief, especially when your family is murdered in cold blood, just going after their daily activities, and now they're gone. So we ask that God will bring peace and strength to the hearts of those who are left to mourn their death, that God would take care of them. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come to you this morning, first of all, to say thank you for one more day. We thank you, O oh God, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for giving us life and health and strength. And thank you, O oh God, for blessing us to once more be in the house of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here once more, where we can come to worship and praise you. For God, you are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of all our worship. And this day, O oh God, we lift up your name and we say hallelujah to you. For indeed, God, you are a great God. As we come this morning, Father, you have heard the many requests that have been lifted. You're hearing the requests that are being lifted even right now. Not only here in this sanctuary, but those who are watching us by way of Facebook, by way of our live stream, those who are listening to us on this conference call. God, you are listening to all our requests, even as we speak. And for that, we thank you for being a prayer hearing God and a prayer answering God. Father, we don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow, next week, or next month. But God, what you have taught us to do is to trust you every day and to know that you are a God who possesses all power. You're a God who have never failed us. And we know, God, you will always be by our side. As we come together this morning, oh Lord, we pray for those who are sick and those who are bereaved, those going through difficult circumstances that only you, Father, only you can fix. So we ask now that you will please let your presence, your power, and your purpose become manifested in these situations, that lives will be blessed, that hearts will be comforted, that bodies will be healed. Please forgive us of our sins, and please have mercy on us, O oh God, for our own righteousness. Those things that we have done, O oh Lord, that we should not have done, we beg you this morning, please forgive us. Create within us clean hearts. Renew within us, O oh God, the right spirit. And help us to live in a manner that is pleasing to you. Lord, we pray for those around the world who are going through troubles and, and, and trauma and atrocities all around uh, the world. In, the Ukra in Ukraine, in, in, in Liberia, in other parts of the world. We pray, God, you have mercy. That you have mercy, O oh God. Help those in Sierra Leone, in Uganda, in Jamaica, in other parts of the world. Help all those who need you and are calling out to you right now. We come to you on their behalf, asking you, God, to please have mercy. Father, we pray for the families of those who were murdered on yesterday, who started the day expecting to end the day who went about their normal activities of purchasing groceries. And now, God, they're no longer with us. We pray that you will uh, bring peace, bring comfort, bring strength to those who are now crying, to those who are now weeping and grieving the loss of their loved ones. 
And then, God, we pray for peace in the land. For if there's one individual who can drive 200 miles from one part of the state and come into another part of the state just to kill people, we pray, God, that you will bring peace because if there's one, then there are others who are having such thoughts. So we pray, Lord, that you will uh, give them uh, another way of thinking. Change the heart of stones, O oh God, into a heart of flesh. Let them know that their way is not the right way, but that we can all come together at the table of fellowship, the table of peace, and we can talk about our differences and resolve our differences. Let them know that violence is not the answer. Killing innocent people is not the answer. I pray now that you will continue to bless the rest of this service. Let your power and your presence fall fresh and be manifested in this place. Bless the preacher who will stand behind this sacred desk to deliver unto us, O oh God, the word of God. And we pray that when we leave here today, that we will know that we have been in your presence. When we leave here today, we will walk closer to you because of who you are, because of what you have done. So now we say thank you. We praise your name. We look to you now for the answers you're going to give. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding to accept whatever answers you give to us. But in all things, help us, God, to give you the praise. For you are worthy. You are worthy. God, you are worthy of all our praise. Oh, you've been so good to us. You've been so merciful. You've been so gracious to us. Father, we look back at our lives and we see how far we've come. And God, we know it was only you and no one else. So God, today we say thank you and we praise your name. Bless us now as we continue to follow you each day of our lives. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Let us all say it together. Amen. 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 Trust God today and know that whatever it is you have prayed for, that God will make a way. Amen. Amen. Uh, many of us have served him long enough to know that when God says something, he means it. And when he says in his word, I will take care of you, you can trust it because he will. And all of us, even those of you watching, you trust him, you know, because you have experienced his providence. And if God did it before, God will do it. Have I got a witness? Yeah. That God will do it again. I cannot tell you how many times I've been in those situations where I'm, I'm, I'm starting to worry about this and worry about that. And, and, and God has a way of tapping you on the shoulder and said, do you remember <laughs> how you got through this and how you got through that? And takes you down memory lane and you see how he brought you. What the same God who brought you through this and that, he'll bring it through the other. All you got to do is trust him. Amen? Amen. 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 Reverend James Wright will come now with our scripture. Our scripture this morning will be coming from St. John's, the second chapter. I'll read for our hearing verses 1 through 10. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And it reads thusly. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto them, They have no wine. Jesus said unto her, Woman, 
what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said unto the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set, and there, were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk or got drunk, then that which was worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. The word of God for God's people. I'm sure by now you have looked in your bulletin You've seen the name of the preacher who was scheduled to preach today. Uh, again, we want to continue to pray for Reverend Emmett Dunn, who is not doing well. He's under the weather. He was scheduled to come and deliver the word of God for us today. But I'm so grateful uh, that we have three able preachers, uh, besides the pastor, Three able preachers who are always ready <laughs> to preach the word. I, I, I was, I am ready <laughs> to preach uh, the word, but um, I, I called uh, Reverend Wright, Lynette Wright, uh, this morning and said, because she was scheduled to preach uh, next month. And I said, Reverend Wright, can you, can you back it up about uh, 30 days? <laughs> And it took no time for her to answer, yes, I can. So we're blessed this morning uh, to have with us uh, one of uh, the treasures of this church. Uh, a lady who I have observed in the few months I've been here, dedicated worker, dedicated worker. And uh, she continues to bless us leading the women's ministry and in other positions where she served where she serves, and today uh, she is serving as the preacher for this morning's worship service. Uh, so we pray that you will uh, lift up the Reverend Lynette Wright as she will come and preach to us today. Open your hearts, open your minds to what God has to say, because what she's going to give you is what God has given to her, and whatever she gives to us today. We receive it uh, because God has given us this privilege. And I just want to extend my thanks and appreciation uh, to Reverend Wright uh, for accepting, for making the change, the adjustments, if you will, uh, to preach on this morning. And we pray that God will let his power fall fresh on her as she will come and deliver the word. The choir is going to lead us uh, in one uh, selection. After that selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of the Reverend Lynette Wright, uh, Associate Minister here at the West Highsville Baptist Church. Pray with her, witness with her, as she will come and break unto us the bread of life.
says, my hallelujah belongs to you. It says, hallelujah is the highest praise. So everybody in here just say hallelujah. Amen. 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 When I got the call this morning about 7 o'clock from Reverend Rainsbury, I woke up and I was feeling a little tight and I stood there. I read the text. I stood there a minute. I guess I ain't respond long enough, so he called Reverend Wright on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> so Reverend Wright came to the door with the phone and his phone and saying, he said, uh, Reverend Rainsbury needs you to preach this morning. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, what you going to do? I stood there a minute. I said, I'll do it. Yes, man. Amen. Especially when I thought about my word this morning. Um, Reverend Wright read the scripture, and I'm just going to focus on verse 5 of that scripture. And it says, his mother said unto the servants, whatever he said unto you, do it. So my subject is, just do it. So I'm just going to do it this morning, amen. 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 Do it now. <laughs> John is the author of this book. His purpose for writing is that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, Amen. the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life through his name. Amen. In this second chapter of St. John, there is a marriage ceremony taking place in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus is present. Jesus himself and his disciples are also there. Amen. Marriage is a wonderful gift from God. When we live and love up to the promises of marriage, it's like having a little heaven on earth. Amen. The hosts had run out of wine, and the mother of Jesus said unto them, him, they have no wine. Have Murray must have had some concern for the host, knowing that it would have been an embarrassment for the family if this matter was not taken care of. Amen. Marriage back then was celebrated for a week, and the groom family was to provide all the food and drinks for the week of celebration. Amen. And I said, wow, how did that turn around <laughs> to the bride? <laughs> Jesus replied unto her, woman, why are you involving me? It isn't yet my time for miracles. Amen. When Jesus referred to his mother as woman, he was not being rude. It was an expression of respect. In Hebrew, woman meant madam. And remember, Jesus used the same expression as he was making provision for her at the cross. Amen. But Murray, being the mother, took advantage of her paternal rights and told the servants, whatever he says unto you, do it as if Jesus had already consented. Amen. Murray had confidence in him knowing that he was not selfish, Amen. always thoughtful and dependable. In other words, she knew Jesus would come through when you need him to. Amen. Now, after commanding us to honor our father and mother, Jesus could do no less. Amen. So he told the servants to fill the six water pots standing there to the brim with water. Amen. After this, he told them to dip some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And when the master had tasted it, he implied that this was the best of wines. Amen. Jesus had turned the water into wine. Amen. This miracle was Jesus' first public demonstration of his heaven-sent power. Amen. It also was a sign pointing to who he is. His disciples believed that he was the Messiah. Yes, yes. I would like to focus on the B clause of verse 5, last two words, do it. And I would like to add one word to it. Just do it. Amen. Murray is also speaking to us, telling us whatsoever Jesus tells us to do, Amen. just do it. Amen. This morning, I would like to take you back down memory lane to some times where God had given tasks to persons and told them to just do it. Amen. Let's take a look at some of the things God told people to do and the outcome after they did it. When God told Noah to build an ark, the people laughed and jeered at him for there was no rain. Amen. 
but only Noah and his family were saved when the rain did come yeah, because yeah. he just did it. Amen. Abraham was going to sacrifice his heir Isaac for God told him to do it and was blessed for his faith. Amen. For God had provided a ram in the bush. Yeah, yeah. When Moses and the children of Israel came to the Red Sea, with Pharaoh's army coming behind them, God told Moses to stretch out his rod. Amen. And because he did it, the Lord caused the waters to divide. And they went across on dry land, but Pharaoh's army got drowned Amen. in the Red Sea. How many times have you come to a Red Sea in your life and didn't know how you was going to get across? Right. And then you remember that Jesus is a way maker yep, yep, and yep. he'll make a way if you will trust and believe in him. Amen. Just do it. I'm sure Joshua didn't understand how by walking around the wall seven times that the walls of Jericho would come tumbling down. Amen. But God said, just do it. The three Hebrew boys, when refusing to bow down and worship idol gods, chose rather to be thrown into the fiery furnace than to denounce their God. Mm -hmm. If I could use my imagination for a moment, I hear Shadrach saying, Meshach, are you going to bow to their gods? Mm -hmm. And Meshach say, no way, Shadrach. We will worship our God only, yeah, and yeah, only to yeah. him will we bow. Amen. Then I heard a Bendigo say, there is strength in unity. Mm -hmm. For together we stand and divide it for you fall. For we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. Amen. So let's just do it. And because of their faith in God, he delivered them out of the fiery furnace. Then there was Daniel who prayed to God three times a day, even though a decree had been signed that no man could pray within 30 days. Amen. And if they did, they would be thrown into a den of lions. So they cast him in the den of lions. But because of his belief in God, he was not harmed. Amen. If we would really believe and not just say it, but just do it, God don't have to remove the danger, but he'll protect us in the midst of a yeah, bad yeah. situation. Yeah. Saints, he does it for us today, for we live in a world full of crime, Amen. danger seen and unseen. But God gives his angel charge over us to keep us in all our ways because he loves us. Then there are some general instructions God gave that is still effective in this age and time. Just to name a few, God said, if my people, yeah. which are called by my name, shall humble themselves yeah. and pray and seek my face uh -huh. and turn from their wicked ways, uh -huh. then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal the land. Last but not least, God tells us to give tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. The word says you are cursed with the curse yeah. if you don't. But if you do just like the Lord said, he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. If you just do it, he'll hold back the devour for your sake meaning all the things that he keeps from you that you won't even know about. Amen. If you just do it, although you're, you have bills and you can't seem to make ends meet, God can change computers and somehow you will receive funds you had no thoughts about. Amen. If you just do it, I guarantee you that every obligation you have will be met. Amen. For God cannot lie. He's not a man that he should repent. There was a story about two men. Their names was John and Jack. Mm -hmm. John and Jack crashed their private plane on an island. Mm -hmm. Both of them survived. Jack ran all over the island looking around. He came and told John that there is no food to eat or water to drink. Mm -hmm. He said, we're going to die out here because no one is going to find us. John was nonchalant and seems to have not a care in the world. Jack started yelling again that we're going to die. John folded his arms and says, we're not going to die. I make over $100,000 a week. Jack became angry and grabbed John and shook him. He said, here we are stranded on a deserted island with no food, no water, and you talking about money. Still unfazed. By the situation and by Jack's insistence, John said, I make over 100000 per week. 
I tithe 10%. Trust me, my pastor will find us. <laughs> We need to have just as much faith or more in our God as he had in his pastor. If you just do it, your finances may get low, but we'll never run out. If you just do it, our churches will never have to have bake sales, sell dinners, candy, tickets, or anything else, for it will already be in the storehouse. Now, as we leave memory lane and enter into the now and present, I just want to remind you that the same God who did it back then can, will, and still does it now. Amen. I am just refreshing our minds today lest we have forgotten how we get our blessings. Amen. Let me tell you there is power in obeying the scriptures. Amen. There is victory, joy, and happiness in yes, being doers is. of the word. Amen. Just do it. I would just name a few things he tells us to do. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over. Yeah. Let me try to explain this to you. Have you ever put flour in a cup mm. and it looks as if it's full, as if it is full, but mm. then you shake it and press it down. You can get some more oh, in the yeah. cup. Right. Shake and press down and get some more in the cup. That's how it is when you give, you receive blessings on top of blessings until they just overflow. Yeah. There are some things that Jesus tells us to do that in the natural doesn't make sense. For example, he tells us to love our enemies. Yeah. Bless them that curse us. Do good to them that hate us. And pray for them which despitefully use us and persecute us. It's not easy to do. But just do it. Amen. Jesus says, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, mm. then turn to him the other also. So you mean if you smack me, I can't smack you and you can smack me again? <laughs> no, God said just do it. <laughs> Don't ponder about it. Just do it so you can get the results. <laughs> Jesus says to keep our temple clean, mm. for it is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And then you could present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reading, hearing, and obeying are to be a way of life for the believers. Amen. We can't be hot on Sunday for the Lord, mm. and then Monday through Saturday we are cold working for Satan. Mm. Jesus says he doesn't want any lukewarm Christians, Amen. and he'll spew us out of his mouth. Yeah. How can we sit under the word of God Sunday after Sunday, program after program, and no change is in our lives? We profess it from our mouth, but it's far from our heart. Why don't you just do it? So many Christians have a dark side that they camouflage under the light side. But as long as you are not delivered, it will rise again. But the Bible says if a man, woman, boy, girl, be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Yeah. Behold, all things are new. Yeah. You have to let go and let God. Just do it. Our true submission to God and his word is not shown in the amount of time we spend listening to God's truth, but by the degree to which we live in obedience to it. In order to have a relationship with God, you must know about him. Be obedient to him and praise his name. Yes. For when praises go up, blessings come down, and God inhabits the praise of his people. Yes. If God has spoken to you about something in your life he wants you to change, just do it. Amen. He's not going to tell you to do anything that is contrary to his word. If you obey the Lord and do what he says, he will always you will always come out a winner, Amen. for there is no failure in God. Amen. Obedience is not optional as a Christian. Amen. It is mandatory. Amen. Obedience brings blessings. There is a pr promised blessing for doing what the word says. Is it always material blessings and prosperity? No, it is not. There are many faithful Christians who suffer persecution for their obedience 
rather than receive material blessings. Amen. Then what is the blessing? The blessing is the honor God receives through our obedience while going through. Amen. Just keep on doing it. You have to be careful who you talk to when you're going through. Amen. Others always seem to have a solution for your problem and cannot even solve their own. Amen. I can assure you that you can count on the faithfulness of God. Amen. He is faithful even when we are not. Some things we would not have to endure if we would have given it to Jesus in the first place. Amen. You may not be able to see him, but he, know he is a very present help in time of trouble. Amen. The enemy tries to stop you because he knows when you find out that God will never tell you to do something you can't, he loses the battle. Amen. Read the word as our instructions on how to handle anything that may come up against us. If you are dealing with fear, read Psalms 27.1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When in need, read Philippians 4.19, which says, My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. When in doubt, read Psalms 34.8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Amen. Just do it. I don't want to even think what would be if Jesus didn't do it. Remember when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed to his father to let this cup pass from him. Yeah. But then he said, nevertheless, not as I will, but thy will be done. I want you to know that Jesus recognized that this was a bitter cup. All the sickness and disease was in this cup. There was cancer, AIDS, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, sugar diabetes, kidney failure, heart trouble, depression, and any other sickness that there is. But that's not all. Also in that cup was all the sins of the world. Jesus knew what it felt like to be a murderer, drug addict, robber, rapist, liar, backstabber, or any other sin you can commit. But Jesus went on to Calvary. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That's why we can go to Jesus with our problems, for he understands how we feel no matter what we are going through. And because of Jesus' obedience to his Father, his death on the cross and the shedding of his blood, Oh, the blood, nothing but the blood that saved us. We have a right to the tree of life. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's why we always can say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Amen. Just keep on doing it. Never give up. Just keep doing good. Keep on serving the Lord. Keep on helping others. Keep on living for Christ. And in the end, you will reap a bountiful blessing. That's the reason when we enter into the house of the Lord, there should be hand clapping, foot stomping, shouting and singing going on for the Lord. We can never repay God for what he's done for us. The least we can do is offer the sacrifice of praise continue that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name Amen. if you really want to show Jesus that you appreciate what he has done for you uh -huh. just live like he lived walk like he walked and love like he loved Amen. by doing good and helping others we need to trust and depend and lean and stretch out on Jesus Amen. I want you to know today that Jesus says to come unto him all that labor and are heavy laden, uh -huh. and he will give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy yeah. and my burden is light. Uh -huh. If you just do it, he'll give you peace in your mind, a peace that passeth all understanding. Oh, yeah. If you just do it, you'll have joy, unspeakable joy. Yeah. A joy that will remain in you no matter what's going on with you. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you just do it, you have love, that agape love. The unconditional love that covers 
a multitude of sin. All right. If you just do it, you'll be able to love people when they don't love you. Yeah. You will be able to bring your flesh under submission to the word of God. Yeah. God has been good to us, yeah. mighty, mighty good to us. Yeah. And that's why we should give him the best of our service, yeah. for he's worthy. He's worthy. He woke us up this morning. He gave us new mercies for today. We can see, we can hear, we can talk, we can walk. And I'm grateful about it. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad he did. And Lord, I just want to tell you, thank you this morning. Come on, church, it'll be worth it at the while. Regardless of what happens to us today or tomorrow. Regardless of what losses we suffer, hills we climb, hurts we have to endure, God is able to fix it. God loves you, and now is the time to obey what the Lord tells you to do. Trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. God wants us to be happy and live an abundant life while on earth. But one day, saints, all the burdens, trials, tribulations, persecutions, worries, disappointments, headaches, and trouble will be over when we see Jesus. We should be preparing for our exit. The songwriter said, I'm on my way to New Jerusalem where the sun never goes down. Every day I'm making preparation. I'm packing up, getting ready to go. Packing up, getting ready to go. What is you packing, preacher? I'm glad you asked. I'm packing righteous living because none but the righteous shall see God. I'm packing love because how can I say I love God and can't love my brothers and sisters I see every day? I'm packing helping someone else so that my living won't be in vain. We're packing up and we're getting ready to go. One day I want to see him face to face. If we just do it, we'll have everlasting life where we will reign with the Lord forever. There is a prepared place for a prepared people. You'll have a new home over in glory. We'll have on long white robes. We shall see him as he is. If you don't have a relationship with God this morning, you just need to confess and you can have one with him. Just like Jesus transformed the water into wine, he wants to transform our life, turn our sins into grace and death into life. If you just do it, God bless you this morning. God bless you this morning. God just want us to do it. I know sometimes it get hard on this road, but I guarantee if you try Jesus, you won't have to try nobody else. Amen. At this time, opening the doors of the church, if anyone is not saved and you want to come to Jesus, come just like you are. He'll receive you. If you're looking for a church home, West Highsville is a good home. Amen. If you just want to have a relationship with him, just come up this morning. God is just waiting with arms wide open at this time. say yes to God today? I say yes to your will and to I say yes when the 
spirit speaks to me in my whole life I and my answer will oh yes amen amen God has spoken to us today through his preacher and all our answer ought to be right now is yes. Jesus said yes when he went to the cross. And Jesus did it on the cross. He died on the cross. Didn't stop there, took him off the cross, put him in the grave. And on the third day, he did it again. He rose out of the grave. And now he sits at the right hand of God intervening and praying and advocating for us. My brothers and sisters, if you know within yourself that you have not received this Jesus who bled, died, and rose again just for you, oh, don't let this day go by. Don't let this day get away from you. Give him your life today. The preacher has preached the word of God and now it is your responsibility to respond to that word. What would you do today? Jesus did it. Now what about you? Just do it. Give him your life. Give him your heart. And let him come in and change you today. Let's give God a praise for this preacher who has come and blessed us today. Amen, amen, amen. Reverend Wright, you bless our hearts today, and I'm glad that you were able to come and stand behind this desk and let God use you to bless our lives. And for those of you who are watching by way of Facebook and our live stream and listening by way of our conference call, if God has blessed you through this message today. Let us know. And if you are seeking him today, he is available to you. All you have to do is reach out to him and he will bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God the praise in this house today. Ah, uh, yes. God is so good and so loving and kind. My brothers and sisters, let us now prepare uh, to bring our gifts unto the Lord. You heard the preacher talk about how we need to tithe and bring our offerings to God. So let us prepare our hearts to do that at this time. Our ushers are going to come and as we give our tithe and our offerings on this day. For those of you who are watching by way of Facebook and our live stream, you can give also on our website, whbchurch.org. There is a give button on our webpage. You can click that button and you can give uh, to the work of our church. You can give your tithe and your offerings to the West Highestville Baptist Church. Father, we thank you now for this time of giving. We thank you for this time, O oh Lord, of praise. We ask now, God, that uh, you will bless the gifts that are to be given and bless the givers, O oh God, and pray that this will be used in kingdom building, not only here in our community, but all around the world. Thank you for giving us something to give and giving us a place where we can give it. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Real, real, Jesus is real to me. Oh, oh yes. He gives me the victory. Well, so many people die. That is why, that is why I love it. Well, Jesus is real. Oh, I know he's real. Real, Lord. Jesus is real to me. Oh, he gives me the victory. Well. Why, why, I, oh, 
Jesus is in the morning he's real, real Jesus. Oh, oh, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him. I can't live without. That is why. That is why I love him. Oh, Jesus is in the day he's real. Oh, real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, oh. he gives me the victory. Well, so many. I can't live. That is why. Oh, he's so real. Every day he's real. Real. Jesus is real to me. Oh, 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 yes. He gives me the victory. So many people, I can't live with, I, that is why, that is why I love him so. Amen. Amen. Thank you for what you have given. Uh, the Bible teaches us that God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, young adults on next, uh, next Sunday, following service, can you please stay for about uh, 15 minutes, young adults? Um, as you know, we're planning uh, our young youth and young adult service on uh, the fifth Sunday of this month. And West High Israel, we're going to have a good time on the fifth Sunday as our youth and young adults take over the service. And we're looking forward with excitement to what God is going to do. So young adults, if you can, uh, just stay a few minutes after um, service on next Sunday as we come together to go over a, um, a few things. And let me thank you in advance, uh, our young adult ministry, for uh, volunteering and participating uh, in what's going to happen on the fifth Sunday of uh, this month. We certainly hope and pray that this service was a blessing uh, to your life. We hope that you heard a word from God today and that you are going to take action based on what the preacher has given us today. Just do it. Just do it. You know what's right? Do it. And you will be blessed because you obeyed the word of God. If the Lord says so, I hope to hear your voice tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m. on our morning call morning and meditation and then we will come together again on Wednesday for our prayer meditation and Bible study uh, the conference call number and the passcode uh, is on your bulletin so please join us as we come together to look into God's word and to fellowship with one another by way of our meditation we're still studying the book of Ephesians we're coming uh, towards the end of that book, chapter 6. So if you're joining us, please again read chapter 6 of the book of uh, Ephesians as we wrap up our study in that very, very important book. Continue to remember all those whose names were lifted for prayer. Continue to pray for uh, Reverend Dunn that he will recover uh, from his illness. And pray for those families in Buffalo, New York, um, who now have to deal with the grief and the death of um, their loved ones and pray that God would bring peace to our land, uh, that these kind of happenings uh, would not be uh, a regular uh, event. Uh, so we pray, in fact, that they won't happen at all. Uh, it won't happen at all, but uh, we want to just continue to trust God and know that God would take care of us. Have a good week. Have a good uh, time this week. May God continue to lead you and guide you every step of the way. Amen. Trust him. Trust him. Trust 
God. Whatever it is that you are thinking about right now that you're facing this coming week, give it to him and then trust him. And the God who took you through it the last time, however long ago that was, oh, he'll do it again. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. Amen? Amen. Let us stand. God has smiled on me. He has me free. Oh, God. Smile on me, he's been good to me. Oh, God has smiled, he has set me free. Oh, Smile on me, he's been good. God, our Father, we thank you for this preacher, the Reverend Lynette Wright. Thank you, O God, for giving her the word that we needed today. The reminder, O God, to just do it. You have given us your word. You've given us your, given us your command and now comes the instruction for us to simply obey what you've told us to do. I pray now, God, that this word will continue to resonate within our hearts and our minds. And as we go throughout this week, that we will remember what has been said here today and what has been done here on this day. Thank you for a wonderful worship experience. Bless all those who came today, oh God. You know what our hearts desires are you know what our needs are we pray God you will meet them according to your will we love you today we thank you today we say hallelujah to you today not only for what you have done but for who you are and now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest Rule and abide in our hearts from now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say it together. Oh, God has smiled.